So, parts came back from powder coating. Went with two colors. We did a pebble gray and then accented it with this nice regatta blue. The parts look great. I'm super happy with the way they came out. Our covers hopefully worked well. We'll score this edge and peel these off. It'll give us something to mount the rails to that should be bare steel. finish is just spectacular so I'm super excited to see how it all looks with the other parts assembled and the aluminum side covers. I think it's going to look great. We're going to start by prepping the lower tub. This involves opening up and tapping all the holes on the top surface so that we can install the fasteners in preparation for the next step. The surface uses a combination of M12 and M6 fasteners. These bolts will be used to attach various sheet work surfaces, spoil boards, vacuum surfaces, peg boards, and a few vice options. Next we'll turn the tub upside down for the pour and we'll leave the fasteners in place to allow the epoxy to cast around them. A little bit of grease on the threads should prevent the bolts from adhering in place during the cure. This is the resonance that the epoxy should eliminate. The two inches of granite epoxy will make the assembly perform as if it were a much more substantial piece. It should substitute the lack of mass from the plate steel assemblies. We've used this before and we're very happy with the results. The epoxy and sand mixture is very strong and has excellent dampening characteristics. I've even seen examples of it used to cast entire machine structures. We're using coarse sand and a two part epoxy mixture with two parts epoxy to one part hardener. And this is a slow cast mixture designed to give us a bit of extra working time. The tub will receive approximately 120 pounds of the material while the gantry receives around 80 pounds. This is a bit of a messy process, but it only needs to be done once. It needs about 24 hours to cure enough that we can continue to work on the machine. That all looks good, so next we'll do the gantry. Similarly, we installed the temporary fasteners into the assembly before the pour. This piece will be filled almost to the top with the mixture. The combination of tight plate fitment and the thick powder coating worked well to seal the assemblies we had a few small manageable leaks. Assembly will look like this. The gantry will first receive the 25mm rail systems installed with M6 Allen headed cap screws, followed by the installation of the 20mm ball screw with the fixed and floating bearings pre-installed. After that is in place, the NEMA 34 closed loop stepper motor can be installed with a coupler to drive the screw. We need to remove all the covers that were put in place for the powder coating process. Well, that's got a bad idea written all over it. The main chassis will be assembled upside down starting with the twin drive screws and pre-installed bearings. This is followed by the NEMA 34 stepper motors, pre-mounted to fabricated angle brackets that are adjustable to allow axial adjustment of the motors for installation of the direct drive couplers. After that is complete, the same 25mm rail systems with M6 fasteners can be installed to both sides of the frame. Last, we have the front and rear aluminum covers. The front cover has been drilled and tapped for mounting of the motor driver assemblies. So this is the assembled base so far. X-axis screws are installed. So these are 20 mil pitch screws. 
Everything lined up real nice. This is the crossbar to drive the gantry. All those lined up. Front and rear plates. They're just aluminum. Got all the stepper drives mounted to the front one here. So if I need to access them, I can just pop this panel off and then they all come out. So most of the underside work here is done. Waiting for a couple brackets to mount the stepper motors. So those will show up soon. Then we'll be ready to flip the lower chassis over. Pretty happy with that. Now for the Z-axis assembly, we'll remove those powder coating covers and install the linear rails and smaller 16mm diameter 10 mm pitch ball screw with a direct couple to the stepper motor. The bearings supporting the ball screw need to be shaved down by about 5mm to match the profile height of the linear rail and bearing systems. We'll take this time to install our magnetic homing switches and run some wires in behind the Z-axis plate that will not be accessible once we install it. These are the same type and size of rail systems that we use everywhere on the machine. Obviously these are a slightly shorter length. The only difference on this part is a slightly smaller diameter ball screw and that was so that it would fit under the profile of the linear rail and bearing systems. I'm really happy with the overall fitment of this assembly. The Z-axis nestles nicely inside that Y-axis plate with about 5 millimeters of space on each side. So that should give us plenty of clearance without uh, inviting too much dust and debris to end up in there. Uh, all in all, looks really good and moves nicely, very satisfied. That goes for the other major components of this build as well, the table system and the gantry, the machine components, they all fit really nicely, they installed well onto the fabricated surfaces, they look like they sit nice and flat, all the hole spacings lined up, the motor centers lined up with the screws, all the kind of issues I would expect to encounter if there was a fault in the plate cut design. I haven't encountered any. Hopefully once we assemble all the major components it will just be a blissful union and nothing will surprise us there uh, and so far I am optimistic. This was absolutely my favorite step of the project. It is the coming together and final assembly of all the major components and was the last step before the tedium of wiring, tuning and fixing my various mistakes. So there she is, all buttoned up, all the major components married together. Assembly went really nicely. The gantry fit really well over that lower tub where it straddles between those two rail systems. Fitments were excellent. We left the drive bars off, that's for the gantry, and the Y-axis just so we could freely move it around by hand. This will facilitate wiring. Also, we can find any inconsistencies in the movements, and so far there aren't any. Everything moves really nicely. We left the Z-axis motor in place while we installed it just to keep that Z-axis plate up. Otherwise, it will just fall down and moves freely. So everything's there, looks great. I know you're probably wondering, so we're about 50 hours into the assembly. That's fabrication and assembly at this point, which I think is totally reasonable for this level of product. The wiring I anticipate will take at least that long by the time it's all sorted. So we'll go over that nightmare in the next part.